Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. This video is going to be an addition to our Layers of the Earth series that I created. Only, you may have noticed that in the previous videos, I seem to have covered all four of the um, key layers of the Earth. Well, that's true, but there are also two important other layers, but they're not exactly layers in the same way we define the other layers, in that they are actually pieces of the other layers um, that have certain special properties that we like to use to differentiate them from the others. So the first one of these is the lithosphere. The lithosphere, which is defined as the solid, rigid uppermost part of the Earth. Now that sounds incredibly similar to the crust, which I have discussed previously. But you'll also recall that the mantle actually has a very, uh, a, a very small uppermost portion that is also rigid, um, up very close to the boundary of the crust, where the crust and the mantle make contact. So if I were to just draw in this little picture down here, maybe that's, we'll just say that's the uh, rigid piece of the mantle. And then we can just shade this in. Just to, just to make it look more clear what we're looking at here. This area here, the crust, the, the crust plus this rigid piece of the mantle, it's a very thin piece, um, usually only around 100 or 200 kilometers of the few thousand kilometers deep that the mantle goes. But these two pieces together make up the lithosphere. And that's all that the lithosphere is, the, um, the crust plus the uppermost solid piece of the mantle. Together they are a relatively thin, not as thin as the crust, uh, solid layer. Another interesting fact about it is this is where we have all of our tectonic plates. Um, the the pl tectonic plates aren't actually just situated on the crust, but they are on the lithosphere, rather. Um, and everything below in the mantle, where you have that very plasticky flowing material, that's what pushes them. So I don't know, maybe we can just show some little, some little lines here, pretend those are tectonic plate boundaries, you know, that's where they're cut up. Um, deformation is a key idea when used in talking about the lithosphere. So the two things to keep in mind are that it undergoes elastic deformation after a long period of time, which is to say that it deforms, but it can also be restored back to its previous position, and this usually occurs under very high pressures and temperatures, and it undergoes uh, brittle failure, which brittle I think we've talked about uh, sometime in the past on this channel. A brittle failure is just a sudden, like, with, kind of with a fault, like a snap. Um, you know, just imagine anything you would describe as brittle, I don't know, maybe you've got a very brittle, uh, gee, I don't know. What do we describe as brittle? Whatever, that, that doesn't matter too much. Um, elastic deformation, brittle failure, that's what those are, and that's what the lithosphere is known to undergo. And one final piece here that gets into a little bit about the um, the next layer we'll talk about is the asthenosphere, and the boundary between these two is called the lithosphere-asthenosphere boundary, um, very appropriately named. So that'd just be right there. That is the lower boundary of the lithosphere. The upper is, of course, the surface of the Earth. And, of course, we'll go into more detail on the asthenosphere in the next video. Oh, actually, I do have one more point to talk about real quick. And that is, similar to the crust, the lithosphere can be divided into oceanic lithosphere and continental lithosphere. So we've got 
Oceanic and Continental. And if you watched my crust video, then many of the pieces that we talk about with Oceanic and Continental crust remain true for the lithosphere. Oceanic lithosphere is, of course, younger, younger, thinner, and more dense, slightly, by about like 0.2 grams per centimeter cubed or something like that. It's not much, but it does make a difference. More dense, continental lithosphere is older, thicker, and less dense. And just to give you a sense of scale of how much um, the lithosphere, the rigid part of the mantle, the uppermost rigid piece of the mantle, adds to the crust when we classify it as the lithosphere, um, you'll recall that continental crust is usually about 50 kilometers at most. Um, well, the lithosphere goes to anywhere between usually around 50 kilometers through 250 kilometers deep kilometers. And oceanic, you'll recall, that's usually on its own about 10 kilometers uh, thick at the thickest. This is usually around 10 kilometers through, usually more around 150 kilometers thick. So yeah, even the uh, rigid piece of the mantle is a lot thicker than the crust, and you can tell just by looking at uh, these two very solid pieces of the earth, when combining them together, a very small portion of this this entire thickness and this entire thickness is actually the crust. Actually, yeah, those are correct. But as far as oceanic crust goes, or oceanic lithosphere, excuse me, goes, at mid-ocean ridges, it can only be uh, as thick as the oceanic crust is, because that's where you have the um, the magma from the mantle rising up into the to the, into the oceans um, at mid-ocean ridges. So just remember that that's where you have uh, <laughs> pretty much a direct uh, connection between the um, crust and the, um, the flowing part of the mantle. But we still call it the lithosphere because it is still the, the crust still is a piece of the lithosphere nonetheless and it still is solid and rigid. It's just very, very thin lithosphere at that point. And that's all I really wanted to talk about as far as the lithosphere goes. The next video will be on the asthenosphere. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was informative. Otherwise, good review. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao.